tēnā koe te whare, tēnā koutou te whānau o te whare paramata. Kia ora mai tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. Members, before the uh, dinner break, we were debating the Civil Defence Emergency Management Amendment Bill. Claire Curran was speaking. She has three minutes and 30 seconds remaining to speak. 32 seconds. <laughs> Don't contradict the word of command. Mr. Claire Speaker. Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'll uh, be succinct to get my final points across in this bill. Um, Large-scale events and readiness are not covered in this bill, and this is clearly not was not the intent. The problem that we have on this side of the House is at what point do they uh, become covered? At what point is New Zealand going to be reviewing its legislation and its practices around uh, these matters? So we're con concerned that this bill fails to deal with important issues regarding large-scale large events, and a number of submitters mentioned this, um, and this includes um, not just uh, recovery, but risk reduction and readiness as well. Um, despite the commitment of the Minister to a second stage of legislative review, focusing on large-scale emergencies, there's no evidence of this occurring in the short to medium term. And I also want to make the point here that there is no effective, in this country at the moment, there is no effective tsunami national alerting system or even an effective local alerting system, despite there being more than a quarter of a million dollars being spent on this. This is a critical issue, given that there were two major earthquakes that occurred off the coast of New Zealand at the beginning of September, and there were an, uh, immediate questions asked as to why they, it took so long for there to be an alert um, and what the impact is. This is not in, insignificant, these issues. So focusing on recovery is important, not diminishing from that, but so is um, risk reduction and readiness, and we believe there's a lot of work to do around New Zealand on community responsiveness. Finally, a number of submitters com commented on the importance of civil defence emergency management strategic recovery plans. A provision of, for this was contained in the original bill, section 57A. Um, that has now been removed. Now, it was removed because it was considered that it got too complex and it, well, there would need to be too much detail about what those plans should involve. So we were advised that by removing this, it was, it was going to basically be an expectation that in the CDM plans, the Civil Defence Emergency Management plans, that there would be these strategic recovery plans. But the legislation does not require it. We were, uh, alarm bells were rung by major insurers such as IAG around this. And we want to acknowledge that. And I'm putting on um, notice that we may put a um, supplementary order paper on the table at the committee stage around this. And finally, finally, um, what we thought would have been the most contentious part of this bill, um, the, when I first read it anyway, the permanent legislative authority um, provision, which creates a, um, a, a new um, legislative authority to the, for the payment of certain expenses, expenses, it's a flexible payment mechanism, um, wasn't. And we think it is actually quite a sensible mechanism. We got it, um, advice from the Treasury on this, and we'll talk more about this in the committee stage. Ultimately, we support the bill. Fuck away.